I recently read this great book called Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less, and it got me interested in the concept and also got me thinking about street photography. So today I'll be talking about how I use essentialism when it comes to street photography. Before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Ambreen. I'm also known as Hipster in Copenhagen, and during the day I'm a management consultant, but I've been a street photographer for over eight years, and this is my vlog where I talk about all things street photography. I think one of the reasons why this book really resonated with me is that because it really highlights what is essential and what is non-essential. So it makes you ask the questions. So basically you can do it for any area of your life. But lately I've been really focused on bringing more happiness and value into my life. And that means that I had to cut out the non-essentials and really have those essential things that makes me happy. And one of those things are naturally street photography. And this is also why I started this YouTube channel because street photography gives me joy. And when I think about street photography, for me personally, it's not about the gear at all. It's more about the feeling to go out on the streets and make a photo. I don't know if you had that experience of coming home and looking at your photos and be super excited about it because you know that you caught a banger, a good photo. And I think that gives me more value than adding more gear to my street kit. So what is essentialism? So essentialism is basically an approach to life that determines what is essential and eliminates the rest. Essentialism is often confused with minimalism and also living the minimalist way where it's focused on aesthetics only. But essentialism is not focused on having less for some aesthetic gain. And essentialism is actually an approach where you can apply this approach broadly to any area of your life. It's actually a three-step process. So let me give you the Cliff Notes version. So the book is centered around three steps. So step one is explore and evaluate. Step two is eliminate. And step three is execute. The author uses a very simple example of owning clothes. So basically what to keep and what to pass on. So if you look at step one, which is explore and evaluate, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. So do I love it? And do I use it often? And if there's a whisper of no, you have to get rid of that thing because it's not essential. So I did an experiment of my own. So this is the 35 millimeter focal length and I have a very complicated relationship with this. And it's funny because I started out learning street photography with this focal length and over the years I've actually forgotten about it and I moved on to other focal lengths that I like more until I bought my Fuji X100V and I returned to it and I had to learn to love this focal length all over again. So the experiment is basically ask the same questions. Do I love it? Not really. Do I use it often? not as much as I should. So this is by that definition is a non-essential piece of gear that I should get rid of. The next step is to eliminate or get rid of that item. So in the case of the 35 millimeter focal length, I'm not sure that I'm ready to get rid of this item just yet. And there's a reason for that. It's called sunk cost bias that sets in. The phenomena of sunk cost bias is basically that you value your own thing higher than they're worth. Who wants to admit that made a mistake or wasted money that could have been better spent? But there's another way to look at it by asking a simple question. So if I didn't already own this, how much would I spend to keep it? For this particular focal length, I'm not really sure. Step three is execute. So this exercise, however you want to apply it, is not a one-time thing. You have to practice it regularly until it becomes second nature. And there's a brilliant quote from the book that takes that example of clothing once again. Essentialism is all about creating a system for handling the closet of our lives. It couldn't have been said better. Coming back to essentialism and street photography, that's why we're all here. I want to share how I'm slowly introducing the essentialist way of thinking when it comes to street photography. This is something I've talked about on the channel before in some of my other videos as well, that people often tend to take on too much, especially in the beginning. And this is also something I did years ago. I took on a lot of stuff and I was learning about photography. I was learning about the editing process. So I was learning about color theory. What I really should have done is to learn about the basics. So basically exposure triangle. So how to properly expose a photo because that could have saved me so much grief in the beginning. And it actually took me years to completely understand the exposure triangle. But once I put the time and effort into learning about it, everything just fell into place. And there's a saying in the photography community that it roughly takes 10,000 hours to master something. So you have plenty of time to fail and retry it. 
I often talk about why it's so important to focus on one thing at a time. And also, as I explained with my own experience, it really is beneficial for your overall growth and development as a street photographer. So the example I often give is to really understand your gear. And for example, for focal lengths, I learned street photography on my 35 millimeter focal length and I used it for three years. And now I have the same principle for any gear that I buy. I really try to understand it fully until I can recite it in my sleep, so to say. So try to understand the capabilities and try to understand the limitations of that gear. The essentialist also chooses in order to do great work. So whether it's through a photography project or a specific focus area that we just talked about, it's really up to you. How I choose to be on the path of doing great work is subjective, of course, but I can give you an example. So when I come home from a photo walk, I immediately review my photographs. And like many other street photographers, this is actually one of the things that we look forward to. So what I do is that I am my own critic. I try to really be critical of my own photographs. So in terms of a few criteria that I just set up, and when I go through them and if they don't immediately catches my eye or my interest and they're put in a folder that they're not relevant. And that way I'm left with a set of photographs that might be my best of the best. But I repeat that process a few times until I come down to maybe one or two photographs that I really, really like. And that is a very hard exercise to do because often we are biased toward our own photographs and it's really hard to be critical of your own work. But I try to do this exercise as objectively as I can do. And over the years it has really benefited me in terms of really progressing my photography. Most street photographers struggle with having two cluttered photographs and when it comes to street photos, being able to cut the noise is a art form in itself. And no, I'm not talking about grain in the photographs. I'm talking about actually telling a compelling story and be able to keep the focus and attention of a viewer long enough to evoke a emotional reaction which is not that easy and it's no small feat either. When telling a compelling story, it's important that you eliminate distractions that are not contributing overall to the story. And that can be subjects or other non-essential elements. So that way you're able to cut the noise from the overall frame. Most of this has been a mental exercise for me, but with time it has become second nature to only focus on the essentials with not that big of an effort. Sometimes it's what you decide not to include in the frame that is most important. Put it in a context of street photography, it could be that it can help focus on a quality of a thing, so basically a piece of gear. Or it can be that you want to do an activity, so basically doing daily photo walks or pursuing an idea through a photography project. And the great thing about essentialism and the three-step process is that it encourages us to take a hard look at its value. So for the piece of gear, the, what is the value that it's providing you? Or for the photo walks, what is the value that you're getting out of it? And so forth. So the great thing about essentialism is that it can be translated or applied to any area of your life. And for me personally, it has helped rewire my focus on the most important things in life. After reading this book, I often catch myself doing the three-step exercise mentally. And for me, essentialism has been a good way to saying yes to fewer but better things. And for me to have a focused and joyful experience when I'm doing street photography. So I'll leave you here with some food for thought and maybe you can use this book. This is highly recommended if you're looking for eliminating some of the non-essentials from your life and maybe from your own street photography journey. All right, take care. See you in the next one.